This video is about the islands of purple haunted putrescence. You can see the, the ass right there. So pretty cool cover. Um, this is, uh, as it's written here on the front of the, of the book, an old school weird science fantasy campaign setting in wilderness hex crawl by Venger Aznas Satanas. I guess that's how you say it. And at the bottom it has a red caution mature readers. So it does have a couple of adult themes in it. And um, this is a very versatile uh, setting book with some extra stuff included in it as well. I think it's very versatile. Um, you can use this with D&D, &D, any OSR D&D &D type clone game, basic fantasy, labyrinth lord, swords and wizardry, DCC RPG. This goes on and on. You can also use this for post-apocalyptic games too, such as Mutant Future or uh, the Mutant Epoch, old versions of Gamma World, um, Apocalypse World. I mean, whatever you can think of in a, in a post-apocalyptic and fantasy setting, I think this can really kind of stir it up a little bit um, as it's quite different. So you've got some pages in the very beginning. It's, it's, um, it's, written, it's written very much almost kind of in the first person where um, the author has decided to kind of talk directly to you and he uses kind of the first person box. That's kind of neat, it's kind of different. Um, and you get to see what's inside his head with what he was thinking when he came up with, with this book. Um, so I enjoyed that aspect of it. And the first thing that gets you is I think the art is fantastic when you just kind of slip through. I like to grab a book and just kind of flip through and look at the art. I really like the art a lot. It's kind of weird, kind of wacky. Um, and I think it's great. Um, and it's overall, it's, it, I don't think it has any weak pieces really in it. But uh, there's just some pieces that are really kind of mind-warpingly weird, and um, that's fun to look at. Uh, the beginning of the book has some optional rules that he, he plays with. Um, one of them is called the uh, VSD6. It's, uh, it's his take on skill checks and stuff like that. And it uses a D6 dice pool, and I think it's kind of neat. I'll probably try to, I'm going to try it out probably with a, a game in the future as um, some of the games, I think, uh, especially OSR, D&D type clones, they have some kind of wonky rules sometimes for making uh, kind of skill checks or doing anything other than just you know bashing some creature's face in, um, and so it's a neat little system. He gives you that. I thought it was I thought it was a neat little addition. Um, on top of that, there's tons of setting rules for this place, the islands of purple haunted putrescence. Um, there are you know things to help your character uh, kind of flesh out your character. Um, magic use is different, so there's kind of a chart that happens with magic use. There's dimensional gateways. It's very much a setting of, uh, just to give you kind of an overview, of just the weird and the bizarre. Um, you're going to run into, you know, lots of different things from cyborgs, sorcery, you know, normal fantasy type elements, um, strange technology, um, you know, wizards and madmen strange goo and creatures that really have no real um, shape or uh, focus. It's just very bizarre type of stuff that your players will run across should you choose to, you know, to, to run them through this. Um, it's got an ancient kind of history about it, these islands. There's three islands together. Um, so it gives you kind of the, the you know, the history of them. It gives you a new class, the monk, that you can incorporate into your games. And one of the cool aspects of the monk is that he kind of has like a scanner's uh, like brain explosion, like head exploding ability. That's pretty funny, pretty cool. Um, there's some information about magical swords, um, you know, personalities of your sword. And so overall, you know, it's half of this book is just kind of like optional rules that you could use for anything, any type of role playing game, especially fantasy, obviously oriented games. Um, injuries, you know, for when you take, if you go below zero hit points. Um, and then, you know, it really starts getting into the meat of running the purple planet, and or the purple uh, islands, I should say. Um, you know, with your connection to the islands, rumors at the on the islands, um, you know, a bunch of different tables you can roll on, and that's, that's good. I always love tables, that's always fun. Um, some of the things that are, you know, the, the people that you'll find there, some of the factions and races that that dwell on these islands. And I don't want to get too much into actual history of the place, but um, it's just bizarre. I mean, again, this, you know, in, you know, Gonzo gets thrown out. I've thrown that out in a lot of my other, you know, videos. Um, and this is a, this is a, this is a Gonzo kind of weird place. Um, but if you want a setting that has 
that you can just either mess around with every once in a while, throw your players a loop for, you know, just throw them on the island or get them on the island. Maybe they're shipwrecked or something like that. Or maybe they know about the islands and want to explore them. And um, you can really change up what he's given you to really fit whatever type campaign or game you're playing. And I think that's that makes it a, a good resource. And because it has, it's a hex map with, you know, each hex having a different description of what's there. You can really pick and choose to, to use portions of this for your normal campaign. Or you could just run the islands basically uh, as the setting of their own. So again, you're just getting many, many options. If you're playing a post-apocalyptic game, you don't want to change it too much. You can look through this and you could find a couple of the hexes, some descriptions that say, yes, I'm going to use that. And that's kind of weird and wacky. I'll throw them a loop with this. So um, again, very versatile. Uh, after you get through, you know, some of the optional rules, uh, you find more about the islands. There's a bunch of crystals you can introduce into the game. Um, there's tons of different types of them, and they're kind of fun and weird and wacky. There's black, these like dark black pylons that are on each. There's three islands, so there's one on each of the islands. And again, this setting has a lot of uh, dimensional uh, travel, astral projection, um, just kind of weird, crazy stuff that you may not see you probably don't see really in a lot of other fantasy games um, or settings. There's Snake Man, Monkey Man, there's, um, there's a bunch of just a different variety of, of worshippers, cultists, and just uh, general wackos that are, that are dwelling on these islands. Uh, there's a wandering monster table for whenever your players are, are moving from hex to hex. And um, then you get into the hex section uh, proper. And a couple of the, the hex sections just have one kind of encounter, like this is what you you would face if you go into this hex. And then some of them give you a couple of other options. They may give you three different encounters um, that you may face while you're in this hex. And I like that a lot. I mean, it's, you're giving you some more. And on the flip side, there's some hexes that just don't have anything on them. It may say just something very small, or it may just say, um, you know, you know, there was a, a spaceship that crashed here. Because you're going to have a melding of science fiction and fantasy in some of these hexes. And it may just say a spaceship crashed here. And that's kind of up to you to kind of do what you want with it. Um, it would have been nice to have some more description with that, completely fleshed out. But again, he's giving you a little bit of option just to kind of change it if you want. Of course, you'll change stuff however you feel. Um, and I can't go through all of these hexes. I mean, there's over 116, I believe, descriptions of different hexes with a bunch of different art, sometimes attached maps, uh, some good maps drawn along with it. And they're just, they're just wacky. Um, strange fruit, strange androids, cyber scorpions. It's almost like a melding of Gamma World fantasy and then um, like Far Cry uh, Blood Dragon, that expansion that came out for Far Cry 3, um, where you have kind of strange science with this almost 80s or 90s feel of uh, kind of like a B-rated movie type thing that's going on with the Your players are never really going to know what the next thing that's going to happen when they go into the next hex. So that's exciting. Um, there's some there's some pop kind of like modern pop references, uh, popular references, I guess I should say, to D and D culture that are D and D and just nerd culture that are spaced out throughout some of the hexes. So those are fun to kind of pick up on what he's trying to do and, and make it funny and make it wacky and see if you're your, your players pick up on them. Um, there are some strange, insane clowns. There are uh, a lot, again, a lot of adult themes in it. Um, slave, when women are used to this kind of slave girls, you know, some of the, the tribes and crazy people on here are not exactly nice to women, so it, it kind of harkens back to that old day of um, kind of brutality that's going on in these islands. Um, you're going to have uh, stats that are written up throughout it that are pretty much your basic hit dice, hit points, armor class. You can use those or not, whether or not your game's using those. You can come up with your own. But again, it's a good type of uh, scale to, to change it to whatever game you're using, should they not use that. Um, again, there's art almost on every page. Maybe every other page, there's a piece of art. And so that's, that's helpful while you're looking through it. And, you know, again, you're going to come across strange creatures, weird, bizarre creatures, and there's also a very heavy influence to H.P. Lovecraft and a lot of the Cthulhu, Cthulhu mythos in it. You're going to see a couple of uh, familiar, great old ones and Elder God names written throughout it. So, 
he's obviously taken a, a bit of that and added it to it. And um, that's that's kind of fun to see that that's kind of an attachment to it. You'll see a couple of creatures as well that uh, are HP Lovecraft type creatures. So um, overall, I would say that I think it's a great book to pick up if you're looking for you know this strange type of place with a lot of strange things and creatures, technology, and a melding of all those different types of genres together. Um, it does have some, some cool magic items at the back of the book, as well as some new spells. Um, it's got two great maps. One um, that's a colored map, and you can kind of see the hexes, and then one that's a, you know, a numbered hex map that's in black and white that's got some of, of the art as well on there, and that's, that's obviously for the GM, but then you know, you've got You've got the uh, the player handout that's in color, and you know it's just cool. You can see spaceships are crashed out, you know, crashed in the ocean here and there. The strange tentacled monsters kind of sprouting up from the the ocean floor, and um, you know your player's going to come across some really neat things in this this setting. Um, cultists worshiping huge statues, maybe sacrifices, and then you're just going to have some bizarre stuff like um, scientists that are in this area. They may be working on some sort of strange machine, um, maybe going and create a portal or a dimensional gateway. Um, and so it, it's just a real neat melange of these different type of genres. So that's um, the Islands of Purple Haunted Putrescence. And um, I think it's a fun setting that uh, if you like those type of things, I think your players will enjoy. Um, thanks a lot.